able to see uh, if you want to participate or ask questions, but you may interrupt. Feel free to interrupt. I don't like to be a monologue. And, um, or if you prefer, um, you can ask the questions at the end. Uh, so you simply take notes of the questions that comes to your mind as I uh, go with the presentation. Uh, so um, the title of my presentation, as Juan Manuel already introduced, is Review of the Literature about Pedagogical Models in Teachers' Education on the Use of Technology for English Teaching. Um, so as the title sets, uh, basically what I do is a review of uh, articles and, and publications that have been done till uh, 2016 to 2022 about the variables in my question, in my research question that has to do with the creation or the design of uh, um, didactical design for training teachers, English teachers in the use of uh, digital tools, in the use of uh, ICT or technology and communication for um, language teaching for the English club. So basically that is like what I expect to do. So I, I'm more in the field of designing and implementing um, a proposal for training teachers in the field or in the integration of digital tools to ELT. Basically, that is my, my idea of a thesis. Uh, in, this, um, in this review, um, so I, I'm going to, to let you listen to a song. In order to build background, uh, I, I I know that you have heard this song, uh, Professor. I don't I, I don't think we are. It's already playing on your side. Uh, no, no. Oh, sorry. Ah, uh, I have it ready, but I have to do it somewhere else. Let me see. And I have many things open in my screen, so it's going to be difficult to do it. Okay. Okay, so you will say why, why uh, Professor Camacho started with that song? Simply because I, uh, I like pro professor, professor, sorry, I, I think that 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 unfortunately we couldn't we couldn't hear the song. Maybe it's because you have to activate uh, in Zoom when you share the screen okay. that you also would like to share audio as well. So maybe maybe we All could do that right. again. So how can I do it? Uh, when you select the option for sharing screen. You have the menu, and in the the, the 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 downside or at the bottom of that pop up window, you find like a space to select a audio as well. well let me I see don't know if you can. can hear it now. Can you hear it now? No, 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 no. We could we, we can see right now what what the name of the song is, but we are not. I know hearing this song. Okay. This so you said that I have to do what? Sorry. Uh, when you select the option to share the screen, yeah. you can uh, at the bottom. All right. So I, I couldn't hear. This sounds like. What are you saying? Sorry, but the audio was not good, so I didn't, I didn't listen to you. Oh, okay. Um, when you select the option to share your screen, okay. Yeah. Do you see? Uh, at the bottom, an option that says share audio. Okay. Compact this screen, okay. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So you can come back to the to the screen again and, and, and we can we can hear well what you showed us before. All right.
associate with uh, the song that you have just heard? Someone from the audience can answer. When you listen to that song, what images come to your mind or what experiences that you what we have been through? Anyone? Student movement, said Swiss Jaramillo. Okay. Any other idea? No? Let us see, let us see. The, those of you in the audience uh, here in the room, uh, listening to that song, which memories or events come to mind? Maybe mm -hmm. someone would like to to intervene. Right? Is someone trying to speak? No. Not that it seems. <laughs> <laughs> and they're shy, they're shy. They are very oh, shy. It's okay. All right. Precisely the song is for that. Try to break the ice. Uh, what What do you think is uh, uh, that song represents something that we have been through? What is that uh, event that maybe this song represents? Nobody? Well, let me let me kind of like jump in there. Yeah, probably we're just uh, talking about the pandemic, uh, right. what we had to and go then, through there. All right, I'm talking about the pandemic times. It was like an anthem of the pandemic. It was something that we were, you know, singing and listening during that lockdown that we went through, um, and that is what makes me, uh, yeah, what made me reflect upon. Um, Mm, what we as teachers suffer, because that could be the, the key word that I may use here, suffer because we were not prepared to face the challenges of, uh, you know, uh, remote learning by emergency, as it was called. Um, and that experience revealed somehow, according to Choi, that is the order that I, that I read for this quote, um, he says that this uh, pandemic demonstrated somehow that we were not prepared to use the technology. Maybe we did the best. We were very creative. We were heroes somehow because we were able to keep the dynamic of education, even though we couldn't go, we couldn't, um, you know, go uh, physically to the classrooms. So um, this was what made me think about um, what, can we do in order to improve those digital skills of teachers in order to incorporate technology to English teaching, right? I think that uh, more than any other area of knowledge, English teaching is the one that needs, and I would say must, incorporate technology to learning. Why? Because, um, is the only way to connect our physical classrooms, our students here in Colombia with other latitudes, with students from other regions. Uh, it's the only way to develop the cultural and intercultural competence that you know that is something that we need to do in the classroom. How can we develop these competencies if we, if we don't have or we don't have, the, or you don't, we don't give the chance to our students in our classrooms to connect with the students uh, abroad, yeah? And this is the chance um, to connect our students with native speakers of the language, the ones that uh, they did crystal set that belong to the inner circle, and also to uh, speakers of English of other languages or the outer circle, right? We, as Colombia, Colombia, you know that we belong to the expanding circle where English is a foreign language. And we hardly have the chance um, to provide students opportunities to practice the language outside the classroom. As we, as students um, in New Zealand, in, even in India, where um, now English is the official language, they may have that chance. So in ELT, I can see that is a, 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 an urgent need. And I think that we cannot get rid of technology or simply be blind to the benefits that technology may bring to language teaching because of these reasons. Um, so what I did uh, in, the, in the review, starting with the literature review that I made, I found um, 
one common denominator in the models that have been designed in order to train teachers in the incorporation of digital tools to ELT. And it's the TPAC model that you can see here on the left, the graph of that uh, model. This model basically was designed, um, taking into account three components. The author of this model um, was very concerned about training teachers not only in technology content, that most of the courses or the training um, programs that are designed, they focus a lot on technology, but they forget the other two components that are maybe as important as preparing students or, or teaching or, or, or training a student on how to use devices, applications, uh, websites, and, and so other um, tools that you may find in the web. And those other two have to do with content knowledge. That is obviously what we manage. So in this case, what we manage is the knowledge about the language and also pedagogical knowledge. And maybe the pedagogical knowledge is the one that causes more, I can tell, um, or could cause more impact in the learning results or the learning outcomes that we may get. So what this author says is that we, when we train teachers, we have to pay attention to these three components. They have to go hand with hand, right? Um, the TPAC, so is uh, as you see in the, this Venn diagram, is um, um, the link of three parts, technology, pedagogy, and content knowledge. Um, in this uh, exploration that I made, I have to this I have to define what is basically what is um, a pedagogical model, and I found that there is this framework that I try to represent with this uh, with this figure. Um, what we find in the first layer that is at, at the at the top is the philosophy of education, the policies of education that belong to educational models. So an educational model is the one that defines basically the philosophy, the education policies that rule um, the, um, the bottom um, strategies and the didactics that are uh, evidence in the class. In our case, the general law of education is the one that rules education in our country. And there are all, uh, in English teaching, there are policies that come from the Ministry of Education and that um, somehow prescribe the way that we have to organize our teaching. After that layer that is at the top, we find pedagogical models. And the pedagogical model has to do with theoretical constructs, with scientific and ideological foundations to um, interpret, design, and adjust the pedagogical reality to concrete historical needs. Uh, in this case, there are different proposals that have been made in the field of education. Most of them have been made by religious communities like the Jesuit community. I have the chance to, to work with the Jesuit community at Colegio San Pedro Claver in Bucaramanga. And they use a paradigm that was called Paradigma Pedagogico Ignacian. Um, and this has a, a design, special design that goes to the next layer and it's the didactical design. So this didactical design that comes from a pedagogical model that is ruled by an educational model uh, is specifically has to answer to these questions. What to teach, why to teach it, what for, where, when, for whom. This is something that Ocaña, that is one of the others that I, that I have the chance to read the articles and, 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 and the thesis that he wrote in 2013, uh, make us aware of. And going down, we find that these didactical designs um, need to have a pedagogical architecture. I really like this term. I really like this term because um, usually we as teachers, we are believed to be more instructors, no? like agents or mediators of knowledge with the students. But in this new concept, teachers are not only 
uh, knowledge transmitters or are not only instructors that want to develop or pursue to develop the skills, the language skills in this case, on students. But we are designers, we are architects of our own pedagogy. And this is what I what I attempt to do. I try to, to, um, to construct a pedagogical architecture that leads students or give us or trace lines or guidelines to train teachers in their cooperation of uh, ICT to ELT. And uh, this pedagogical architecture was something that was especially introduced in the terminology of, uh, of uh, pedagogical models because of the merge of e-learning and web-based web learning. And finally, the components of that pedagogical architecture are strategies, techniques, sequence of learning, resources and procedures that are effectively seen and that impact effectively the English class. In that order of ideas, uh, web-based learning has to do with um, a definition that I found by Emma Berry from 2020, uh, online learning or e-learning because it uses web resources such as email, video conferencing, uh, lenses, la, le uh, lectures, live lectures, video streaming, websites for course material and information in general. So basically what we are doing in this moment, we are on a web-based learning because we are using a technological gadget in this case that is video conferencing through Zoom, yeah? Um, another author says that web-based language learning, apply the web-based learning, but in this case to language learning, brings many benefits for EFL students. The students can practice without limits of time or space. Also, a web-based language learning fosters collaborative learning with peers by means of project work, as its language acquisition process through opportunities for scaffolding and ZPD zone of proximal development. So something that in the theory sounds very good and that maybe in the classroom we don't have the chance to do, it has or it may be done through web-based learning. And, the, and that is all that theory of, um, you know, Vygotsky's theory that has to do with the zone of proximal development, scaffolding um, strategies, cooperative learning, because the students can cooperate not only with the students in the classroom, but students in classroom from other latitudes. Um, real scaffolding and autonomous learning because the students have to face to knowledge by themselves. They have to make decisions. The, the tutor is not gonna be there all the time. The students have to make their own decisions, run bricks, Something that I also like in learning is run bricks, uh, make mistakes and learn from the mistakes. That is the most important. So in that order of ideas, I post these two questions for the literature review. The first question has to do with uh, finding out if there are pedagogical models or methodological models for training teachers in the incorporation of ICT to ELT. And if there are those models, what type of models are there? Basically, those are the two questions that I, that I posted. Um, the method that I use, I um, look in databases. And the one that I use was um, Web of Science. I don't know if you are familiar with that. Web of Science that maybe compiles many other um, web bases. Uh, the articles that I look for were in the field of education between the years 2016 and 2022. The procedure that I used to analyze the, the articles was Prisma Statement by BioChiny App from Biomedics. That is a software, it's an updated software created by, a, by, by two um, um, engineers from Spain, and the software, what, what the software does is to organize the information of the articles in a, in a matrix in order to have like, a, you know, um, a landscape, a general landscape of the, of the type of search that you have done. So this type of um, software allows you to organize the articles by authors, uh, year of publications, 
um, language that, that, that was, they were reading abstracts, keywords, and so on. This is like um, the Prisma flow chart that I designed according to the results. Um, the first um, result that I got was 6,866 articles in that database that somehow were related with pedagogical models applied to, um, to education in general. On the, on the right, you are going to find the papers that I excluded. Uh, the, the first group of papers that I excluded uh, were because they were not written in English or in Spanish. And those were 2,856 articles. So I had 4,010 articles that were written in, in, in Spanish and, and in English. And the next filter that I used was, sorry, The next filter that I used was papers. I excluded the papers that were not in the years that I that I already indicated. And they were 1,360 papers that were excluded. So I had uh, 2,650, and I excluded from that number 260, uh, 2,625 documents because they didn't satisfy the inclusion criteria. It means that I that I have to check carefully each of the articles, the abstracts, and to see if they were related to the area of knowledge I was interested in or not. I found many articles that talk about pedagogical models, but in science, in the teaching of science, in the teaching of mathematics, and in physical education. So they belong to education somehow, but they didn't belong to the area of ELT. Finally, I analyzed 25 articles. That was the, the sample that I um, got at the end of the analysis. In the general statistics, these graphs were taken from Bible Chinese, the software I was, I was talking about before. This software organized the information of the articles. And in general, we can have this landscape that is um, the sources of the journal, there were 19 books, 25 documents. It has the annual growth rate, the document average age, and so on. Um, in the orders, for example, the, the orders that wrote the articles were 72. And only five, five of the articles were written by single authors. It means that most of the research that is being done is, do is, is being done cooperatively. Uh, and there are other, there is other information that you may use according to the objective that you have in, in, in your thesis or in your research work. This graph shows where those articles that I selected were written. Most of the articles were written in Spain, as you can see the blue line, maybe it's too, 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 um, too thin, maybe you cannot see it very well. But it's Spain, the, the country where uh, most of the articles related with pedagogical models have been written since 2017 up to now. According to those, to that, um, those 25 articles that I selected, I organized them in, in, in four groups, in five groups, as you can see there. 11 articles were models that show how to incorporate technology to pedagogy in general. That is at 44% of the articles. Another group were articles to develop innovation and creativity, 8%. The number three, the group number three, is models that were written in order to affect the disposition, the thinking, the acceptance of technology by teachers, 20%. Models that talk about uh, how to incorporate technology to ELT, that those were the ones I was highly interested. Only five articles are related to that, 24%. And the models that also show how to incorporate or how to develop the digital competence in teachers, uh, where only three of them, 12%. I, I am 
I am particularly uh, interested in the two last groups, in the groups of models that use or, or show how to train teachers and how to incorporate technology to ELT, and in models that propose how to develop the digital competence in teachers. Some of the models that I found that I'd like to share with you, if someone is interested in this, in these findings, you may reach me, I'm gonna give you my, my email and I can give you details. But basically, the, the, I, I, can, I can tell that the most interesting models according to the objective of my, of my work are this one. This is, the, uh, this is a model that combines the TPAC model that I already explained, the TPAC model and the SAM model. SAM stands for Substitution, Augmentation, Modification, and Redefinition. Basically, uh, what these authors intend to do is to see how the teachers are able to substitute face-to-face um, -face classroom practices into the technology, for example. How, for example, to do a debate using an internet gadget or an internet um, site or tool instead of doing it in the classroom. So how, how, to, how skillful are the teachers in order to you do or, or change or modify what they do in the classroom into the um, e-learning? How also augmentation has to do with technology acts as a direct substitute with functional improvement. How they are able to um, gain competence in the use of those technological gadgets. It's not only to use the gadget, but also to move to a higher step in the digital competence that is to design and create their own materials. How modify the materials, that is also an end. How the teacher not only use the, the technological tool, but is able to modify it and is able to redefine it. I really liked this, this, this type of, of model because of this um, criteria that they use in order to evaluate how teachers are using or are um, somehow um, adapting the technology to the technology that was, uh, not the technology, I would say the didactics of face-to-face -face classroom to um, to the technology. This is another model that is called the foreign language learning mode. It's not a model, but it's a mode. The authors are written there. And basically the authors say that uh, in this mode, they take into account two parts. One that has to do with teaching process. There should be teacher's preparation, teacher implementation and teaching evaluation. And the parts of learning that have to do with blended learning and based on a small private online courses. Uh, and on the, on the part of the learner, there should be autonomous learning, face-to-face -face communication, and knowledge expansion. So as this is blended, and I really like this because the students have to prepare the lesson before. It's like a flipped classroom, no? A flipped classroom methodology. Students prepare the material, they join in face-to-face -face classes to discuss, and after class, they go deeper on what they were able to discuss. This is one of the most important models for me because it's the one that I plan to base my uh, own didactical design, and it's the source model. What does the source model is? Source star for scaffolding online, shelter online scaffolding environments. Shelter online scaffolding environments. Um, this model has three moments in the learning trajectory that the author summarizes in preparation, tax explanation, information collation, then they go to refine the data and make decisions. Yeah. So the teacher explains a topic. The students collect information about the topic. This could be offline or, um, yeah, offline basically. 
Then they refine that data, they extract evidence and findings, and finally, they make decisions about what they are going to present to the group, and they publish that information. So it's a kind of flipped classroom that I was talking about, flipped classroom that, that I know most of you are familiar with. Some activities are done in class, and some of them are done out of class. Another interesting model, this is from China, is the ecological model, um, with a policy that they have there that is internet plus. What they try to do, and I like this idea, is to use open educational resources, those resources that are free somehow when you access, for example, um, let's say um, Kahoo, you have some part of the Kahoo um, gadget that is free that you may use for some weeks. So they try to use as as much, as better as possible um, this type of, I could tell, uh, free um, or no cost um, resources that we may find in the web. I also like this one that have to do with PLE. PLE stands for personal learning environments. The implementation of personal learning environments. So every student has their own website where they link that website to different resources that we may find in the web, right? So he's connected with the web through uh, a personal learning environment that, that may be, for example, a blog from Blogger. The active teaching model. That also looks for the integration of technology to, to the classroom, to education. And it comprises curriculum program, things content, project and formation of groups, and then moves to the integration of those uh, elements of the curriculum to the digital technologies. How? Through final projects, through tax and activities, through planning, through individual reflections, to communication of the final program and reflections, and the self-assessment and participation. The holistic competence model. I like from this um, from this model. I like the part that has to do with the uh, some kind of sensibility to the community where learning happens. It has to do with the commitment to with society, uh, and I associate this with um, community-based pedagogies, right? So something that, because you may say, you may say no, if we are in a, in a technological or, or in online or an e-learning based um, environment, maybe we cannot affect the community. No, it's the opposite. And this author claim that technology has to uh, approach um, the education communities to the realities of the communities, communities where they live. And I totally agree with that. The virtual coaching model for professional development to increase teachers' digital um, competence. Uh, I like this because I also interested that my study or the implementation of, 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 of my uh, proposal affect the digital competence of teachers. He says that we have to start by establishing the need. So maybe like a needs analysis about the the state or the level of digital competence of the teachers uh, that we're going to affect. Then we have to create partnerships, um, create some target projects, assess the progress, because the learning is going to happen through this uh, target differentiated projects, assess the progress in the digital competence, reflect on the integration of technology to to, um, in this case, to ELT or to the area of knowledge uh, the, teacher, the teacher is an expert in. And then we go back to establish the need and so on. Okay, so those are like the models that I, I, I standed out. 
I, I stood out and I found that are really interesting. And these are the um, discussion and implications of uh, the, the literature re review that I made. First of all, um, I can tell that the original search, as I told you, uh, gave a result of 6,866 articles. Um, but however, only, as you saw, 25 are specifically related to ELT or to develop um, pedagogy and educational skills in teachers. Most of the articles and most of the studies take for granted that everybody knows what a pedagogical model is. There is no definition of pedagogical model in these articles. They assume that everybody knows what is a pedagogical, uh, a pedagogical model, no? A TPAC model is the common denominator. Everybody that creates, or most of the articles that I read that creates proposals or models uh, to incorporate technology to, to education, most of them are based on the TPAC model. Um, this is something that I already said, but it's in the, in the, in the, in the, in the kind of conclusions. Most of the articles that are written or that were found belong to Spain, Malaysia, and China. And Spain is the one that maintains an average of eight articles from 2018 to 2022. With regards to the first question, if there are pedagogical models for training teachers in the incorporation of, uh, of uh, ELT, the answer has several edges. Uh, and I showed you already, I already showed you um, those 25 models, how they are organized. 11 have to do with the incorporation of technology to pedagogy in general. Two are models that develop innovation and creativity. Four are intended to affect students and teachers thinking, acceptance of technology. And uh, only five, as I said, are models that has to do with the incorporation of technology to ELT. From those five models, the ones that stand out is uh, the source model that I already explained, the sheltered online scaffolding environment with three moments that I already showed you. Uh, and it's interesting, the model, not only because uh, it's, con um, it's founded on contemporary teaching and learning theories for the development of 21st century competences in students, but also because it presents clear methodological and didactic, didactic procedures that other models didn't show, right? Uh, this model is based uh, on theories like discovery learning, active learning, project-based learning, tax-based learning, uh, constructivism, uh, chat theory of Vygotsky. So it really, really a very complete uh, model that I, that I really like. Uh, the analysis of the models also, namely um, to be familiar with learning and teaching designs, that in spite of not being conceived for language acquisition, they may become valid basis for my intention of adopting, uh, for creating a model for training teachers in the use of digital uh, tools. The ones that stand out also, I, I already showed you this uh, integration of uh, um, TPAC model with uh, SMCKI. Uh, in relation to the question number two, that has to do with if there are models to develop the, the digital competence in students, in sorry, in teachers. Uh, I found that these models trace general guidelines to train teachers in the use of technology based on the integration of the three uh, TPAC knowledge uh, components but without defining a didactic procedure for classroom instruction. So one of the failures or one of the disadvantages that I found is that they talk about pedagogical models, but they don't define um, clear procedures in order to um, incorporate the model to a classroom. And these are the final conclusions. Um, and I highlighted this idea 
that is urgent to focus on the integration of pedagogical tools to the development of language skills uh, for community language teaching perspective. And we have to focus on practices that respond to the problem of communities as Kumar, Kumarabadi Velo alleges. Uh, research proposals in this field should be based on solid theoretical learning and language foundations, on concrete actions that involve the development of impact knowledge and teachers and, uh, and teachers and learning competences for the 21st century, the progress in teachers' digital competence through the use of assisted frameworks need to be considered as a source of reference in determining the effectiveness of models to conceive without forgetting to affect teachers' motivation, disposition, and beliefs to make this integration real. Because one of the big obstacles that we may find are teachers' beliefs. No? Um, as when we are going to generate any change in society, there is always going to be a kind of resistance. And it's because of the beliefs that many teachers have about the use of technology. This is the bi bibliography that I used. And that's it, basically. Thank you for for being attentive and listening to my uh, presentation. This is my email in case that some of you could be interested in reaching me in order to go deeper on the findings of my um, leadership review. So now I'm open to questions from the audience and, and I would like to know um, if we have English teachers, I guess, yes. Do we have English teachers in the audience? Yes, I can I can speak for one, two, and three of them. So yeah, at least we're three. And we have three viewers in YouTube who might be as well language teachers. So Professor, thank you very much for sharing your preliminary insights of your doctoral studies. Um, now it's the time for the audience. Maybe there are some comments, maybe there are some contributions, maybe there are some questions. So they are very welcome in this moment, and yeah, hopefully they will join the conversation. Let's see. Well, while they prepare the questions, um, I'd like to tell you that I'm, I'm conducting a preliminary um, survey um, that wants to find out precisely which is the level of digital competence competence of, a, of English teachers in Colombia, and also um, how um, they, somehow, what, what is the didactics that they use in the classroom dealing with the use of technology. So I'm going to paste here the link of the survey. If you are very kind to access the link and answer uh, to this survey, it will be I really appreciate it because I need 300 samples of the survey. Hopefully, I'm almost in the number. I need like 290. I need 300 samples in order to validate um, this instrument. So I really appreciate if uh, English teachers in the audience could um, answer, reply to this uh, instrument. Thank you very much. Absolutely. We, we, we make sure to uh, disseminate the link to share with colleagues and also here at the university, uh, we have an Institute of Foreign Languages. So for sure, we might, we, 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 we are going to, to, to share the link with, with them. So mm -hmm. let me kind of like copy it and keep it here for future reference. Any comments, any questions before we adjourn the session? Anyone? All right, uh, you can post the questions also uh, in the chat in case that you might not want to intervene orally. Um, but let me kind of like uh, tackle the first question, Professor. Uh, something that caught my attention during your presentation was that Spain seems to be 
uh, 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 very intently to focus in, in terms of research uh, 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 in this area of, of, of models of technology integration in, in the field. Um, I would like, because you are precisely doing your doctoral studies in Spain, uh, maybe you could comment on that. Is, is, there, is there any particular reason why Spain seems to be, at least according to your sample, emphasizing more this, the, the exploration of technology in ELT, uh, maybe apart from the pandemic? Maybe are there any other reasons? Or why is it that Spain seems to be more marked uh, in these terms? Yes, and it's a very interesting question. Thank you. I think that uh, Spain is in the highest rates of uh, production of pedagogical models because there is a tendency and universities are really interested in, in uh, improving the indicators of innovation. They are really concerned about um, increasing the rate of innovation in, in the, um, I can tell in the, in the doctorate thesis, no? Precisely the, the doctorate that I'm, I'm studying right now is, is about innovation, no? didactic innovation. And uh, they are really uh, interested that uh, every, every, every proposal somehow integrates um, new ideas and, and new proposals, no? new, new forms of, uh, in this case, disposing the educational, um, the educational field. Hmm? Uh, I think that, that is because of that, because they are being measured and uh, high end is one of those uh, universities because if you access um, websites like um, Simago, for example, um, there are some indicators and one of those are innovation. One of those is innovation. So they are really interested in increasing the, the innovation uh, rate. And I think that the only way to increase it is like, uh, in education has to do with uh, what I talk about the uh, pedagogical architecture. We have to become designers, no? not only transmitters, not only um, the ones that replicate other models. Uh, the models that we replicate um, are foreign, for example, they are sometimes um, out of our context. And that's something that we need to do. We need to plan and we, and we need to think about proposals that impact somehow the realities of our communities. Thank you very much, Professor. Any other comments or questions, both here in Zoom or in YouTube? More than welcome. Going to see if in YouTube we have someone posting questions. Yeah, there is a question. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. From the five articles you finally focus on, are there any similarities to our local context? Yeah, uh, uh, well, I wouldn't say similarities, I would say uh, procedures and uh, learning sequences that may, um, may be used in our context, right? But as what, what I'm thinking about the, the model that I, that I intend to design, they have to be built based on realities, as I said, you know, based on needs. That's why I'm, I'm conducting this survey, because I don't want to plan it on, on imaginary ideas that I have in my head. Obviously, we are experts on the field because we, I have been working on, on, on English teaching for long, but I really like to plan it on, on, on real uh, necessities of, of the community. And, and that is something that I like uh, from what, from, I don't remember which is the model, but most of them start by the needs of the community. No? Uh, I, I really like the source model because it integrates active learning uh, theories uh, that I like, that, that I, I really convince, no? I'm really con who is not convinced about what Vygotsky said about that we have to learn in a community, about the zone of proximal development. But sometimes um, those theories are not able to be developed 
when we have the students in the classroom. I think that uh, remote learning or e-learning enables um, that that theory or those principles or those ideas of these oros uh, became a, a reality. <clears throat> so I think that we cannot say this model is the one for Colombia or for or for Tolima or for Ibagué or, or even for the community where I live, uh, but we can adapt it, no? And that's what I what I intend to do. I'm trying to like to take from each model one part that may be useful for the needs that we have in our community. All right, and with that final answer, we have reached the hour uh, assigned to our code suite session for today. Professor Camacho, thank you so much for joining us today, for taking the time yeah, at the end of the day to um, socialize your preliminary findings of your doctoral studies. We appreciate it. We will make sure to share the link of your survey you. so that it, we can you can get more samples there that can be of use. Uh, thank you very much to the audience that joined us today here um, via Zoom or YouTube. We'll meet next week for the next uh, Code Switch session. Until next time, and then have a great thank night. You. Thank you. And I expect to come later in order to show you the results of my, of my study. Excellent. And thank so, you for so um, filling in the survey. Bye-bye.